Hi, everyone! Genshin Impact first launched back on September 28th in 2020 and took the world by storm. Note that the below revenue graphs are for China iOS market only. The first banner in 1.0 was Venti, who was a beast in crowd controlling and destroying all the small types of enemies. Notice that the area under the graph is actually pretty huge, and he's made the most revenue so far. Players were inexperienced about the gacha genre back then, and haven't saved much primo gems, so the graph goes down slowly because the spending was indecisive. The second banner was Klee. You can see from the sharp and high spike that people were either extremely decisive or impulsive. Or perhaps Klee was just too cute. But also it was still Cryo Debuff Abyss, and if you didn't own a Diluc at that time, Klee was the best 5-star Pyro DPS you could have. The first banner in 1.1 was Child. Child is always sandwiched between great banners. His cooldowns are also not easy to manage for casual players. His banner didn't perform very well. Ending in 1.1 was Zhongli. There was a lot of hype for Zhongli, especially the Chinese player base. In the end, there was some big drama about him because he wasn't as great as expected, and Mihoyo caved in for the first time to the player base and announced that Jio and Zhongli would be buffed in 1.3. Next was Albedo, balanced character, not very flashy. He didn't do too well on the banner. Here comes the era of the top 3 Liyue DPS. There was Ganyu, who was just ridiculous without the need to rely on cooldowns. She was also the first waifu to appear on character banner. Still one of the top 4 performing banners as of today. Xiao was highly anticipated since closed beta, and his spikes were higher than Ganyu. His raw multipliers made him excel as a DPS, especially with many mobs around. However, due to the weird triple banner due to Chinese New Year, the area under his total revenue was somewhat mid-level. I won't talk about the Kuching filler banner at all. Not noticeable due to her being a standard banner character. In the last leg of 1.3, the Hutao and Homa banners combined did well and were ranked as the top three performing banners. Homa and Wolf's Gravestone was a pretty sick weapon banner and had its own spikes. Hutao Vape teams still rank as one of the top three performing team comps as well. In 1.4 when Venti came back, everyone who missed him was trying to get him. The two-day spikes were very high, just losing to Klee. He just had the best CC in the game when it came to small enemies. His DPS was alright as well and the utility he brought was just too good. Again, next came the child sandwich. He was in between two Archons and didn't do very well. Zhongli's rerun was a chance for those who missed him to grab him. He was already buffed since 1.3 and was the best shield in the game. He made fighting bosses like Astaha a piece of cake. Eula in the last bit of patch 1.5 did alright. She had caveats like backloaded damage and being physical damage. Plus the Abyss had lectors at that time, so she didn't seem as great. She would rise up in usage after patch 2.0 Abyss monster changes. When Klee came back in 1.6, she didn't do very well. People already owned Diluc, Hu Tao, or were using Xiangling. She was just another pyro DPS that wasn't that special. When Kazuha first came out, people were indecisive, you can tell from the banner slowly sloping downwards. Players thought that if they owned Venti or Sucrose, he wasn't that crucial. His banner didn't do too well. But later on Kazoha would rise to be one of the most useful and flexible utility characters in the Abyss. 2.0 was the release of Inazuma, and Ayaka was one of the most anticipated waifus since closed beta. She had a pretty strong burst and was a balanced character. 
Her banner performed just under the icons and characters like Hu Tao and Ganyu. Yuamiya is a character that many players complained about. She felt a bit underwhelming and wasn't particularly strong at anything. She was one of the worst performing banners so far. Starting with a bang in 2.1, the Raiden Shogun broke all records. Her two-day totals defeated Klee, and her spike even went up on day three. On day four, her spike started to drop down. There was lots of hype for her. She was flashy and had Booba Sword. The Archon plus Waifu combination was very strong too. So now revealed are the two-day totals as well as the banner totals for each character. If you want to use these data and graphs in your content, please send me a DM on Discord and don't just steal the content. Do be nice like this Japanese guy and ask for permission and properly credit my YouTube channel. There's already been some posts taken down on Reddit and we're on the lookout for posts without proper credit. Hope you enjoyed this look back in time on the banners of Genshin Impact and do subscribe to catch the latest news and guides. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time. Bye bye.